One of the simplest ways to have a much better lawn throughout the growing season is to sharpen your mower blade way more often. It's simple to do. It's way easier than most people realize. And going to the shop can get very pricey and very time consuming if you're doing it every two to four weeks or so. At your house, you can get this job done in minutes. It takes me way longer to make this video than it does for you to actually sharpen your blade. Let's go into the garage and I'm gonna show you some of the most common ways and the easiest ways to get your blade sharpened way more frequently than you ever have before. And then near the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you my preferred way, the way that I've settled into doing it most of the time. All right, the first step in sharpening your mower blade is literally tipping the, the machine back. If you have a gas powered machine, you can usually tip it back like you're, I don't know, you're gonna like go up a hill or something like that. Those, that's usually the safest way to tip it. You won't be able to tip it this far unless you drain, drain stuff out. So you time it around like when it runs out of gas, that'll make it a little bit easier. Also, you would disconnect the spark plug. I only run battery powered mowers, so it's a lot easier for me. I just pop the battery out. Now, this is where you've got some options. Lots of people will just scrounge around looking for scrap pieces of wood that they can find a good spot to just kind of wedge the blade in there because when you turn this nut, your blade is gonna be spinning. Um, it can be hard to find the right piece of wood. So, I mean, you'll be going around for a long time just trying scraps. Maybe you could cut your own. I have a number of battery mowers and they're all shaped a little bit different. So instead of just keeping the perfect scrap pieces of wood, just a whole bunch of them for each mower, I just use this tool. It's a lot simpler. You don't have to use this tool. Most people don't use it, but it's what I use. It's just a blade stop. I bought this for uh, a very small amount of money on Amazon. Uh, I'll link to it down below. You don't have to buy it though, but it holds it. Now you're gonna need a socket wrench. I recommend getting a socket wrench or maybe a drill version of one of these things uh, sized properly. You could use one of these. However, the more you sharpen your blades, the more you're going to strip your nut if you're using one of these. As always, elementary school science leverage here. Long handles work better. It's just easier to turn them. And that's it right there. And you just pop that thing off. Always keep the orientation of everything in mind as you're removing it. I'm going to put the nut right there. I'm not even going to take that off. It doesn't need to be cleaned or serviced or of any kind right now. Here I've got this little plate, um, I note the direction that it faces. So I'm gonna put that back. Now with your blade itself, you always wanna keep in mind, you don't wanna install it backwards. Now it's really easy to remember that. Some people tell you that you could mark it, things like that, you don't need to mark it. Just use your brain a little bit here. The blade itself, the beveled edge of the blade faces the deck. That's just how it is. If you have it the other way around, when it goes to cut, like if you could get it to fit, I couldn't even get this blade to go on upside down. But if I could, if the beveled edge is pointing down, then it's not going to cut grass correctly. When the beveled edge is pointing up, it's gonna cut the grass cleanly and it's going to pull the grass towards the deck where we want it. That's how it mulches and that's how it bags. If your blade looks like it could go on either direction, Keep that in mind. One alternative way of noting the difference is literally the debris that collects on the, uh, on the blade itself. That's how it's oriented. You can notice that this blade looks actually pretty clean to the downside. And that's because it cuts the grass and the grass that gets cut flies up to the top side of it. So everything up here gets grimy. This stuff could be scraped off, but if it's minimal like this, it's not that big of a deal. There are scraper tools. Uh, that you could use, which I'm going to use, but you don't have to. Now to clean the grime off the bottom of the blades, I use the same tool that I use to clean the, the debris that collects under the mower deck itself. First I do, I scrape large chunks off with my scraper tool. Uh, I want to call it, it's like a mower hawk. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but then I use this little bristle brush attached to my drill to kind of, it's almost like polishing. It's not that important, but as we get all of that grime and stuff 
off of the bottom of our mower and our blade. It just helps with airflow. And you need airflow if we're going to be sucking the grass blades up to cut them or to properly mulch and bag clippings. All right, now that the blade is off and that we've kind of scraped the debris off and polished it a little bit, it's clean. The deck is clean enough. I'm not going to polish the underside of the deck. The next thing to talk about is the actual blade. That's the reason that you're watching this video. This blade is looking really good simply because I sharpen it regularly and I don't have a lot of rocks in my lawn. I don't usually hit things with this blade, so it doesn't get significant dings. The more frequently you tend to your blade, the cleaner it's going to be, the easier it is going to be to keep it sharp and in good condition. Eventually you'll have to swap this thing out and buy a brand new blade because they might bend if you hit something big. And sometimes if you, if you clip a rock, you might create a burr big enough that there's really no reasonable way to fix it. General maintenance, however, every two to four weeks, depending on how often you mow, this becomes a piece of cake. A brand new blade, almost any blade that you ever find at any store, this bevel, this actual blade cutting area is going to have a 30 degree angle. Now, I don't know the science behind that, but over the years, lawnmower engineers, I guess, have determined that 30 degrees is kind of the perfect balance between cut quality and durability. Now, if this angle goes up, let's say closer to 40 degrees, you're going to have longer term durability in the blade tip but you're going to sacrifice cut quality. You're going to start fraying your grass blades as, as the mower tries to chop them in half. Now, as you go below 30 degrees, let's say down to 20 degrees, then this blade gets sharper and sharper, and it's going to cut the grass better. However, the durability of the blade is going to be very low. So when you go to sharpen these blades, the ideal scenario is to match the 30 degree cutting angle. That's almost impossible to do by eye. However, that's how most people do it when they first start, because the very first way that I ever cut a blade or sharpened a blade is using a hand file. I would like hold the thing awkwardly and just try to match it. Now you can kind of match it pretty good, but this takes forever. And I know because I did this myself for a long time. I don't want to say I was cheap or that you were cheap, but I was cheap. So I didn't really want to go out and buy any tools to do this. So I just took my time and I got it good enough. I got a little bit of a sharpness to, to this, but it's almost impossible to fix divots. Like for instance, right here, there's a little divot uh, I must have hit something at some point and really took a little chunk out of that. If I wanted to fix that with this, I'd be here all afternoon. And then the sad part is once you fix it, then you have to flip it over to the other side and remove all of the same amount of material to balance the blade out, even though there's no divot on this side. There is nothing wrong with this method. If you're not hitting rocks and you're doing this once a week or so, really you just sit here for five minutes or so and you just keep a crisp edge on your blade and that's going to do okay. However, in time, I started switching to an angle grinder. Now this is just a general purpose metal grinder and I would do the same thing. I would kind of put this on a block usually in the grass or in the driveway, and I would just go over it attempting to match the angle. And you can get pretty close. Over time, after you sharpen your blade five, six, seven times over the course of a season, if you had the tools to be able to measure that angle, you probably wouldn't be at 30 degrees anymore, but you can get kind of close. The problem with that is it's just slightly awkward to hold it and you gotta like really wedge the thing down and you're never really sure because as you put it on a block and you stick your foot on it to hold it in place, it kind of wobbles a little bit. So you're never really gonna get a perfect angle. There are other tools and I have collected them over the years. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you now because I don't use either of these methods anymore. So after using the hand file method for a long time and the kind of the angle grinder in the middle of the yard under my foot on a block, 
um, I started thinking this could be easier. This could be less awkward if I get myself a vice, so like a, a tabletop vice. Now I had, I've had these in houses past, but when we moved in this house, I just never put one in. This was finally the motivation for me to go out and buy one. Now this is nothing special. This is probably one of the cheaper, smaller ones that you can get. There are better ones out there. I'm not suggesting you buy this particular one. This is just the cheapest one I could find quickly uh, a while ago, and I've been working with it ever since. But I got this thing. I installed it on my on my desk workshop bench here, and I got me one of these uh, sharpals. Sharples. Sharpal. 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 It's an all-in-one sharpener. This thing advertises itself as a all-in-one. You can sharpen kind of a little bit of everything. Your scissors and your mower blades and your machetes. All of my machetes I could sharpen with this. Uh, all of the other things like hedge printers. But mower blades is on the label. So I got it to try it. The problem is every single, and I used it, I don't know, for a while. Maybe a month or so. Maybe not even that long. The problem is none of the blades are the correct angles. If you look really closely at any mower blade, you've got a flat side. So it's literally a flat 90 degree kind of angle. Uh, it's a flat side and then this 30 degree angle. So you need, you need a vertical with a 90, with a 30 degree angle coming off of it. None of the blades do this. The one that's the closest is this one. It's got a flat, with an angle coming off but i'm gonna guess that that's about 45 degrees maybe it's 40 degrees but the angle is just not right so if you're using it or if i when i was using this i was either sharpening this to the point where it wasn't sharp enough to cut the grass well or i was rounding it off so that it wasn't uh flat up and down on the other side i don't know how to describe that better the angle just wasn't right, so I scrapped this. Now, I could use this for other purposes. I have hedge trimmers, and I have garden shears, and lots of other things I could use it for. Uh, but mostly, this is just taking up space now, because I tried something else. The whole point here was mower blades. So after shelving my Sharpal, I picked up another drill bit. Since I used kind of that brush bit to kind of clean the thing off, I thought, hey, let's keep it with the drill. So I bought a small package of these knife stones, is what it's called. It's a grinding stone for general purpose sharpening. There's a flat edge right here, a flat edge there. There's a angled in there, and then you get some more angles. The thing is, another problem is the angles are not right. Now I got a flat edge, so I could go up and knock burrs off. And so far to date, that's the only reason that I use this. I experimented with it for a while and it's really hard to use it on this thing. Mower blades, although they're very stiff and I got it in a vise, they still flex a little bit. So as I'm going over this, it's like bouncing around. Uh, but if I put the flat edge up against the flat edge like that, I can knock burrs off the back, so if I hit like a stick or a rock and I get a tiny little burr on the back side, I can knock it off with this really easy, but it's not really sharpening it. To sharpen it, I have to go right down the middle, but then I run into the problem again of putting an angle on this side and that side, which you don't want on a mower blade. So these are mostly just taking up space in my garage. Again, I do use them a little bit every now and then to knock burrs off the back side of these. But when I went back to the angle grinder on my vice grip, I kind of use the angle grinder for both sharpening and knocking the burrs off. So these things don't really get used much anymore. They never really got used much in my garage to begin with. Kind of a failed experiment. They're cheap, so not a big loss. Ultimately, I scrapped both of these ideas and I picked up my angle grinder again and brought it to this. This is what I should have done in the first place. Easy usually wins in almost all scenarios around the house. And this is easy. This has been the method that I've used for a while now, using a handheld anger grinder with my blade in my desk vise. And I could take this to another level and get a desk grinder um, instead of using this and then take the mower blade in my hand and run it up against it. Those things usually cost quite a bit and they're bigger and I don't want something like that. I don't need to grind very many things. This works really well for me and it's much cheaper. 
let me show you how I do it. Now for this method, all I do is I turn this this way so I have access to the blade right here, tighten it up, make sure that's tight. Now from this position, I can see this angle really clear and I can butt this angle grinder right up against my chest and I can put it right on there and just kind of lean back and forth ever so slightly and go up and down. Now I'm gonna do that with the thing going. That's how I ensure that I get a very even cut or grind against this angle and get it as precise as possible. It doesn't take very long to make this really sharp. I will have to go a little bit further to knock some of these burrs out. So I'll be pulling more material out. I'm gonna flip the blade over, do the other side, but then we have to put it on the balancer to make sure everything is balanced. Filming a video, I almost forgot eye protection. All right, now we gotta level it. And this is where I get a little bit nitpicky. Some people like to throw nails in the wall and say, just do that and level it on the nail. I don't subscribe to any of that. Just buy the $3 tool. I don't even, these things are the cheapest things under the sun and you can actually balance your blade for real. These things, this is what I'm talking about. You can buy these in little hardware stores in your town. They cost almost nothing at all. You can also buy it online for a little bit more expensive. No matter what, these things are cheap. This is what I'm talking about. Grab your level. I put it on my workbench. Look at this. My workbench is not level. Look at this. I'm going to put it on my floor. If I put it on the floor parallel to my door, it's not level. But if I put it on the floor perpendicular to my door, that's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. Then I'm gonna grab my blade and stick it on there and make sure that it looks level enough. That looks pretty level to me. It could be slightly better, but not by very much. I could take a little tiny material off of this side over here to make it slightly better, but we're getting into diminishing returns. Get the little tool. I don't. Just get the little tool. They cost almost nothing. It's like buying a box of pencils. You need them for your garage, just get this. Now from here, we're just gonna take the blade and bolt it right back onto the bottom of our mower, exactly the same way that we took it off. What's really important to keep in mind here is we're doing this for the health of our grass. Anyone could cut grass with a dull blade, but we don't want to rip it. We want to cut it. Cutting the grass with a sharp blade is going to result in grass that is more resistant to disease during the high disease pressure times of the year. This is usually mid to late spring through the summer into early fall, really half of the year. There's a reason why I take my mower blade off so often to sharpen it. I don't want to have to apply fungicides to my lawn to keep it looking its best. Now during the summer, if we want to keep our lawns green, we need to have sharp blades cutting the grass and we need to be watering the lawn less often. Both of these tactics are going to improve our grass's resistance to disease. I have a video up here all about how I keep my lawn green during the summer without watering it every day. Make sure to watch that next. And all of the products that I used in this video are linked to down in the description below, even the ones that I don't recommend that you buy.